What's up everybody? I'm George and welcome to the Blade HQ warehouse. Welcome to Blade HQ everybody. I'm George and I'm Theo. And today for you guys is December 26th. We hope you all had a great holiday. Our holiday is a few days out. That's true. I hear you're going home. I am I'm going home for like a week and a half. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. I've been home for like a year and a half. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to talk some awesome new knives, including one that I think is the perfect Pandora whale hunting knife. Sounds good to me. And let's get into it. So, starting today, we have a really awesome giveaway for you guys. So, with every order over $99, just $99, you will get the tantrum folding knife. And you'll get one of Ooh. three. So, we have three. We have the Burlap Micarta Damascus. We have the Jade with the Stonewash. And what's your variant? Uh, green Micarta with a black blade. Yeah. Anyway. It's a super rad little knife, and it has on the back kind of this like scraper area. It's in the liner, so it's not gonna hold an edge forever. I wouldn't trust it as a seatbelt cutter, but this whole area is great for cracking a cold one or whatever it is you do with your knife. Anyway, a really awesome knife, super flicky action, on bearings. $99 you spend at bladehq.com, you also get this thing. So you're getting like his and hers knives, or you're getting yourself a knife, and you, you might as well get another one for free. I mean, do you like free stuff? Who doesn't like free stuff? Free stuff's great. And this is great because honestly, this knife alone would probably, I mean, it's a 9CR18 MOV blade or a Damascus blade. So you're already in the ballpark of 99 anyway, and you're getting it for free? I mean, I got nothing to complain about. <laughs> Let's talk about the first knife on the table, the QB Momentum. This is a nice one. It's got the JG10 black blade, black hardware, stuff like that. Everybody likes to see it. Uh, mm -hmm. D2 blade on this one, runs on bearings, got a front flipper and thumb studs. That's a reasonably priced, I think, $37.95. I'm interested in the design of this thing. Like, it has a, dare I say, organic design. Like, it has a nice curve to it, but it, it's simple and easy to use. Looks like a vegetable. A vegetable? So my favorite thing about the QB though, is this is just another one of the brands that's been coming out recently that's offering a really awesome build quality, an interesting but usable design, mm -hmm. and great materials for under $50. And it looks like a vegetable. And it looks like a vegetable. So if you've been looking for that sub $50 knife with a good build quality that looks like your favorite vegetable, the then look no blade. further. Vegan, yeah, I don't think this has any animal products in it. So what I love most about this QB is it's another awesome brand that's been coming out. We've seen more of these and more of these every week, it seems. Probably not that often, but pretty frequently. We're seeing a new brand that's offering awesome materials and a great build quality with a usable design for under $50. A really great time if you're just getting into knives. There's a world of budget options. So next knife on the table is the Blackhawk Be Warned. So when I hear Blackhawk, I think belts, like my belt is a Blackhawk belt. But who knew that they made a D2 bladed, like assisted opening, good ergonomic, well-built knife too. Yeah, I'm a fan of this one. It's a little chunky, but like, it feels good in the hand. It's probably more self-defense oriented and in terms of comfort in hand, this thing has like no hot spots whatsoever. I could definitely understand what the point of the the, uh, the design is for. Yeah, and I appreciate that it kind of has this taper towards the back of the handle. One of the, I was talking to Tomas about this, Tomas Alas from Tactical Tavern, our good friend. And he was saying that these handle designs are really great in a martial arts or hard use scenario because when you're pushing down, especially on the tip, Sometimes your hand wants to ride up, mm -hmm. but these grooves, as long as as well as the taper of the handle towards the back here, make it so that your handle doesn't slide as much. That makes a lot of sense, like keeping you from sliding down onto the blade. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, save you a trip to the hospital for some stitches, mm -hmm. and I'm all about that. I think this is like a really good alternative to the uh, Spyderco Yo uh, Yojimbo and Yojumbo. If that's, like if you like the design of those two, but are looking for more of a budget friendly option. This one comes at $64.95, so it's a little bit cheaper than those other two. Mm. Also, if you like a flipper, if you've been carrying a flipper your whole life and that's the thing you're used to, this is a flipper of a similar sort of Warren Cliff reverse tanto -y design. Mm. Anyway, from, taking it from tactical to like old school woodsy <laughs> is the Fox Knives Zero exclusive we just dropped. This is like the most quintessential Yen's Anzo design I've seen. Really? It reminds me of a lot of like the, t I remember being a, like younger and watching a lot of like Tough Thumbs and uh, Gavco doing knife designs and stuff or mm -hmm. knife mods and they do this kind of like scale thing on it and I remember seeing this a while back in either another Fox design or, or somebody else's design. It it just reminds me of those older Yenzanzo designs. I like it a lot. Yeah, I think it definitely has the texture that Anzo is famous for but mm -hmm. when I saw the blade, I thought this was more of a Nesmuk. So, like, Nesmuk was, I think his name was George Sears a long, long time ago. 
was sort of the father of modern day backpacking. Hmm. And he designed a knife that was a lot like this in shape, where it was like a drop point with a big lump along the back that gives hmm. you a bit more tip strength. So this is the exclusive model that Blade HQ has with this blue handle, and they actually have a black one as well. But the black version and the satin blade, which is in line, you can still get it now, was the first knife I ever bought after I started working at Blade HQ. Hmm. Because I thought it looked really good, and the specific reason I got it, you're gonna say the weirdest thing here, was for Thanksgiving. Why? So to carve right, the turkey? So right around that time, one of my favorite YouTubers, his name is Aaron, he owns a channel called Gideon's Tactical. He posted a thing on Instagram like, this is my Thanksgiving knife. It is a knife that can cut just fine, but it's a, just a little bit dressier. It's like, it's not a suit, coat, and tie sort of knife. It's more like a your fancy jeans and a button-up shirt kind of knife. Something simple, small, easy to carry. That's vaguely classy. So his pick was the Benchmade Mini Crooked River. Awesome choice. That's a good like, choice. Yeah. I thought, you know, I don't have a Thanksgiving knife. Sort of like a halfway between an everyday carry knife and a dressy knife. And I chose the black and satin Zero. But we have I'd a blue have to pick the blue now. over the, the uh, satin. Sorry, the black one. I like the blue. Like the scale blue. is good. Yeah. I also, I also wish I could go back in time and make mine this bead blast finish. It's really good looking. Mm. Super clean. All right, so I know that karambits aren't quite your style, but I want to hear your take on this Schrade Boneyard CLR. I think this is probably a great thin self-defense carry option. Like this, just the stock on this thing and the the uh, sheath are just really thin. So carrying this if you needed to as a backup in any case would be probably a pretty good one to use. It's small. Um, it's not a full finger grip if you put your finger in the loophole, but over the top of it you can, no problem. Uh, if you have smaller hands, you could definitely make use of those finger loops better. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, small, thin, probably great for like a backup if you have something bigger that you're using or you have a service weapon that you have. Yeah, so what I like about this is you see how this loop just barely protrudes over that clip? Mm -hmm. I would take this, and I'll use my sleeve for demonstration. I would put this inside my waistband, mm -hmm. and then when it comes, if I can make this work. Great retention, by the way. So that is all that would poke up over my pants right there. Mm -hmm. And then I just loop my finger through there, pull the knife out, it would hook over my belt, hopefully. <laughs> but it would allow me to get my knife really easily, and it would be so slim and light right against my hip. I would never know it was there until I needed it, and then it would be right there ready for me to go. Mm. So it's very rare that I see a sheet that is great for inside the waistband carry right out of the box. And Shrey did it for $20. 1995 at bladehq.com. Really an awesome deal. If you've been looking at getting into a like a self-defense sort of knife or just a karambit in general, it's really hard to beat the Boneyard CLR for its price. So next up is a new variation of the Giant Mouse Clyde, and I think this is the best jeans knife ever made. And the reason I say that is the denim micarta and the brass backspacer. Yeah, I think they killed it with the like the uh, inspiration of it. I actually really like how this one came out. Like you said, brass, right? So like, yeah, it's gonna age a little bit, and the same thing the jeans do. The micarta is also gonna age. So if you're one of those people who's like a denim head and you just love to see those sick fades. This is gonna work for you. It's so nice and thin I'm looking too. at my jeans right here. I don't know if y'all can see this, but I have the outline of my pocket on my, on my phone on my pocket. So I would immediately come in with like maybe another knife, and I would just carve a rectangle here, so that it would be my jeans too. You could just stitch a pocket on it. That'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> anyway, but it's denim, micarta, so it, it's it's everything you love about denim, but in a handle material. Yeah, it feels good. Looks good. It looks great. I like the the subtle blue to it. Like, I mean, when you use it more, it's going to get a little bit darker. So, kind of the opposite of jeans, how they get lighter with age. These are going to get a little bit darker. But I think they look great. They feel great. The action on this thing, it's just a regular thumb stud on washers, but it feels like nice and slick. Pops right out. Deep carry pocket clip. Mm -hmm. Again, brass backspacer. Looks great. That'll age as well. And, and then if you think, well, it may look good, but is it good? Like, does it have a good steel? Yeah. Satin finish CPM 20 CV. Yeah, that's great. It, it just busts out with one of the best steels there ever was. <laughs> and I have nothing bad to say at all. And it looks so good. Like, uh, I think I'd wear the Canada tuxedo for this one. You know, the, the jeans and the, the denim jeans jacket. Jeans on jeans. <laughs> denim, denim, denim all day long. And 175. Not bad. Yeah, not bad for that 20 CV and the interesting handle material combination. Super nice. Keeping it blue though. Next, we have the Beyond EDC River Wolf. This is a cool one. I really like the way that the anno on this has turned out. It's kind of like, it's a dark blue, but it also has like some turquoise in it and a little bit of purple. 
I don't know what they did to manage to get multiple, like, it's all in one scale, just like a few different colors kind of like interweaving within each other. It looks great to me, and the action on this thing is phenomenal. The detent's pretty tough, but like, it's a heavy blade, so it just rockets right out, even though the detent is so, uh, so tight. Yeah, and it has enough leverage here on the flipper as well. So even if you even if your fingers on the lock bar like sometimes can cause you trouble, mm -hmm. you have enough leverage to beat that detent. Yeah. But because it's a bit of a harder detent, you're guaranteed a nice swift open every single time. Yeah, I think it's kind of hard to actually make that one not open. Like I think though it's one of those flippers that's like, oh, I'm trying to make this not open, and you just can't do it. Mm -hmm. So this one's a John Demko design, and this was one of his production models he sent out to Beyond EDC. And they knocked it out of the park. Yeah, they did a killer job with that thing. Super good ergonomics. A nice finger choil if you wanted to choke up. Mm -hmm. I'd almost like think of this like a outdoor bushcrafty folder. I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. It's a little heavy for that, but I mean, if you like a chunkier EDC knife, that's definitely one way to go as well. I like the the whole presentation of it, even though it's like it's not basic. That's the wrong way to put it, but mm -hmm. it's it, it has just like plain smooth scales, opposed to any sort of texturing or anything like that. But they. It's simple, yeah. It's simple. They killed it. Like the pocket clip, it's it's just enough to be something different without being like so out there that it's like you don't want it hanging out of your pocket. Yeah, you see how that lanyard hole goes straight through the pocket <laughs> clip. <laughs> all, all the scales got the pocket clip through the scales through the backspace of the whole thing. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. I like that a lot. And a steel insert as well. I really love to see it. Mm. It's, it's got the uh, included uh, over travel stop too, so you don't have to worry about bending out your bar. Oh yeah, that's on the inside though. Yeah. Just keeping it clean once again. Yeah, Demco Riverwolf. I really like that one. Those ones are going for 319 at bladehq.com. For an M390 blade and a titanium frame lock, like that's very similar to materials and you're getting on a lot of the premium USA made stuff. Mm -hmm. But for 319, that's it's a it's a bit of a spin. This is definitely a bit of a grail knife, but it's a more reachable grail than a lot of the grail knives. Mm. I think it's going to be very popular. I would say so. And this, the blue anodized one, by the way, is the Blade HQ exclusive. So next up, we have a hunting kit. So normally when you see a hunting kit, it's usually this big folding case mm -hmm. that has a bunch of different knives in it. Would you believe me if I told you there's five full-size hunting knives in here? I would not. You're going to have to prove this to me. So this is the Cold Steel Click and Cut Okay, now I'm seeing kit. What, Okay, that makes more so sense. The Click and Cut kit comes with a full-sized handle, so get your big, gloved, meaty hand on there. And then whatever task it is you're doing on your knife, like you gotta say, oh, there's a big old sternum on my bone moose. Saw. Full size bone saw, right there. Get sawn. Okay. Did you just like push the back lock and then it just popped right in? Is that what you just did? Yeah. So it's a triad lock. It's got the stop pin and everything. It just doesn't fold. You just click it in and pops cut. right in and go. Hence the name. So here's the caping blade, and I love a good caping blade. And this one's got the forward finger choil and everything. So you just click it in, and then I, what I would do is I'd choke up, maybe put my middle finger there and put my index finger up here. And that way, if I gotta like get up and cut some weird tendon deep mm -hmm. in my elk, I can just know exactly what's going on with yep. my blade, and I don't accidentally cut something that I don't want all over my back strap. I kind of like how this has got so many options for gripping onto it. So like there's little dips on the sides, on either side for you to get like your fingers on. If you're using your caping blade, you can get your fingers around that easier so you don't slip while you're working with such a sharp blade. Because these are basically just replace, these are replaceable, kind of like an X-Acto knife. And you would not want to be messing up on the edge like that. These things are so sharp. I would not want to mess up and nick a finger on anything. But like being able to have the reassurance of all the different ways you can grip on this thing, mm -hmm. definitely a good way to go. Yeah, and especially I've been looking at bow hunters lately. Our HR guy just chased a deer all over the mountain. He's like, yeah, my pack was getting heavy at the end of that. Mm. And I'm just thinking, if I'm chasing especially a big game animal where one knife could get it done, but it's definitely not going to get it done before nightfall, mm -hmm. I would want something like this because this is smaller and lighter than a full hunting kit, and it would provide me the entire cutting kit I need. I could put it on my belt even if I need to, if I need to ditch my pack or something. Mm -hmm. And it would just make hunting very convenient if I wanted more knives than just the one. Yeah, for sure, especially like with the next one we're gonna talk about, if you had like five of those opposed to just one pack, that's, that is way more convenient and light, like you mentioned, to carry opposed to something like this one. Yeah, now the price on that click and cut is $85.95 at bladehq.com. So it's also a lot cheaper than a full-size hunting kit too. All right, so the last knife on the table here is the Condor Aqua Lore. So a long time ago, there was the Bush Lore, mm -hmm. and then they did the Dark Lore this year with the 1095 blade. That, that was, was a cool one. I like that one. Sort of the tactical one. 
And then this one I chose because it's the Aqualore. <laughs> designed for a bit more water use. Mm -hmm. And I, I have a couple of use cases for this. So first, if you live in Utah, like we do, a carbon steel is great for you because we don't get any rain hardly at all. It is bone dry out here. Like you just came and you're like, <laughs> yeah, my lips are always chapped. If yeah. you haven't noticed that a million times of me licking my lips. Mm -hmm. It's super dry. So a carbon steel is great for us. And some people say M4 is great in the Southwest, but if you live in Florida or if you live in Alabama or something, you better have something stainless. Mm -hmm. And many people in the bushcraft community say carbon steel all the way. And honestly, keep singing that tune. I love a carbon steel, but some people live in a very wet and rusty environment. And that's where this boy comes in, where it's got that same micarta handle with a nice grippy texture and everything, but 14C28N blade steel, which offers some excellent corrosion resistance. Mm. The same Scandi grind you know and love, and a Kydex sheath, because who doesn't love Kydex? But yeah, and I made the joke earlier about hunting whales on Pandora, but I mean, if I were spending a lot of time underwater and I needed to do a lot of cutting tasks. Mm -hmm. If you like worked on a boat or something like that, yeah, I know, I know a, a lot boat. of like main fishermen who need a knife for when they're doing lobster work, so that might go do the job. Yeah, because the more wet my car gets, the grippier it gets. Yeah, it's a great.